Now you one thing they ain't gonna go away the boobies, baby. <laughs> no, sir. You, you 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 had them for the ever out of this piece. Oh my yes. goodness. So shoot, so so what makes more money, boobs or tits? I mean, ass or tits? That's hard really to say. It's very but you know what's so crazy? I used to always think that ass was something that people loved. Mm-hmm. But what I've really learned is that titties have been like something like guys really, really enjoy. Like one thing that people have mentioned, uh, especially guys, they've always talked about my nipples. They were like, oh, your nipples are very small for like super big titties. Like, oh, How small is your nipples? My nipples are like, I guess they, they people like uh, one guy, he was just like, your nipples look like they're meant for eight titties, but. It's like you get more titty because it's less nipple. I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <That's>, uh, <laughs> and totally, you know, I was like, okay, I'll take it. Hey, me, I'm like this. As long as I can suck on it, we good. <laughs> as long as it's suckable. That's, 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 that's all that counts. That is very yeah, fair. Like, yeah, because um, I've seen a girl with, no, like, she had areola but no nipple. And I was like, hmm. how the hell did that work? I didn't see this shit. Areola, but no nipple. No nipple. It, it, you know, like a nipple stick out. It just, nothing stick out. It just areola. Yeah. <laughs> like, how does that work? But how do you milk if you give birth? There's nothing, there's nothing to suck. Like, that's. It's like, I just want to get one thing. The baby, got nothing to bite, the baby got nothing to bite on. <laughs> Hopefully, the milk just pour out, right? That, 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 that's the hope. <laughs> Yeah, but no, but um, it. I'm gonna tell you what, what. Did you ever do any lactation videos in your career? No, um, I, I've only been pregnant one time in my life, which was mm-hmm. before I decided to do uh porn. So, mm-hmm. um, for me, I haven't had any milk come out. Uh, at, mm-hmm. I mean, at least as of yet, <laughs> but um. No, I have not done any lactation videos. But, you know, I find that funny that you said it because I've recently seen a story of this um, couple who's been going viral because her man sucks her, he drinks her breast milk every single day. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh. Mm-hmm. It seems sexual to me, but I guess women have to have it done because they can't keep the uh, milk inside and stuff like that. So it's helpful, but I'm sure he's enjoying sucking on her breasts every time. I guess so, cause I mean, breast milk is not is 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 it okay? Let's just say it, people it is it, it's not the great tasting thing in the damn world. Ah, okay, okay. And not nah, it, especially good. Like for example, like okay, nut. Mm-hmm. Nah, I've never tasted nut in my life. But for, but okay, for what so- would you tell me? <laughs> <laughs> it cannot have a great taste. Yeah, it, it depends on the guy. Like, for me, uh, and, and it sucks, right? Because, like, for me, the only thing, like, I I prefer, <laughs> it's, it's disgusting, yes. Some people may think it's disgusting, but I don't, okay? Okay. Uh, some, I prefer to drink nut because I'd rather that than it for it nut to go inside of my eye. I cannot <laughs> do Come so, in my eye, and I've done it before. It's not a pleasant sight or feeling. I, I don't. I, and you know, for a long time, I didn't hate facials. I thought facials were cute. I thought facials were, you know, I, I thought it, some bitch got in your eye, huh? Yeah, and I was like, oh, well, that, that's a, <laughs> no more. And it was, I can't even remember who it was, but it was like it shot straight in my eye, like straight. And I was like, oh, this, this is a no go. <laughs> Oh my god! So, so it's kind of like if I did a say with you, that means it'd be she swallowing or spitting yes. out one. Yes, we're swallowing, or it's gonna be coming in the mouth, and maybe it'll drip out a little bit, stuff like that. I just like the girl to spit it back on my dick. That was just me. Yeah, I, I, I love like to spit it back on the dick. That because for me, I think it's sexy. It, you know, it adds more to when your dick sucking. You know, like if somebody comes in like in my mouth and sucking it, I yeah. feel like. The cum brings some type of lubrication to the dick as, as you know as it's coming out and stuff like that. But yeah, now, the cum, I oh yeah, that's hard. <laughs> now I'll ask you a question. Have you ever had when a dude came and that caught you off guard, you damn near choked? Uh. uh no, you know what? Not no, I haven't had because one time I had a um he came straight, like straight on my tongue. The way it landed in the video, mm-hmm. it was it was 
iconic. Like it came in my mouth and it just landed right on my tongue. I didn't choke or anything like that. The only time that I did choke was when um I was uh, I think I was like 19 is one of my earlier videos. I was kind of mm. learning how to suck dick at the same time. And um yeah, I was like kind of like forcing the dick in my mouth, and that's when I threw up. And I, I was kind of embarrassed. I was like, oh my God, I threw up. Like, I don't want <laughs> to. Wait, 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 wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. You just ain't going to skip over the fact she said, before she really not to suck dick, she was on camera sucking dick. So <laughs> I want to know, how was the experience of, uh, uh, of uh, meaning how much experience did you have sucking good dick before you did that on camera? Not much, honestly. Like my my first experience with sucking dick was on camera. Um, I don't know if he's ever released the video, but um, yeah, it, it definitely was on camera. And it, I learned how to suck dick through him coaching me. He, I was just mm -hmm. like, well, and for me, not just also, also coaching. I was serious. I was like, hey, well, what do you guys want? Because up until that point, I I did my first scene when I was eighteen years old, mm -hmm. right before I turned nineteen. Mm. So up until that point, I was just like getting my pussy ate. I wasn't a virgin, but I wasn't really having sex like that. So kind of like I even early in my career, I started to do scenes on camera, but I was also exploring sex for me. Mm. So for me, it was enjoyable, but I was also learning about different positions, different things that people like, that kind of stuff. And my main thing was just understanding how guys like to be pleased. At that point, I was really interested in pleasing, you know, mm. my partner at the time, but then also just pleasing men overall. And um, for me, I was just like, <laughs> people were saying I was a good dick sucker. I was like, I don't know how, but, you know, I was just always asking questions. Mm. Do I go deeper, less tongue, mm. like more mouth, like make it wet, like all of these types of things. So I was just always asking questions and it kind of led me <laughs> to just keep going. And for me, I feel like when you start to have a passion for something, that's when it becomes mm. good. So that's kind of so what happened. So with that being said, hello, smokers, and welcome to the Smokers Lounge. You know I am Kevin Arvis of the a.k.a. the Porn Rap Star. You know what you can do. Find all my links with one link, allmylinks.com backslash Porn Rap Star. Four sponsors to tell you about, racismmagazine.com, blusherotica.com, the Kinky Candle Company, and the queen of law herself, Mitchell Ferrari. Also, you can find me in the mornings, five days out the week at FullSpotRadio.com. Also, check me out at SkyHawkApple.TV.com as well as the BGPLLC app. Now, y'all know who this lady is. She's been on the show before, and I've been on her show before. <laughs> and she's one of my favorite pod mommies as well as porn star, content creator, boss lady, everything in front of the sun, and has that shirt. I'm loving it with the smile. I'm talking about none other. Then the lady with the sexy smile that can suck your soul. <laughs> Vanessa, smile. Say hello to her. Hi, guys. What's going on? <laughs> oh, my God. As you can see, <laughs> we started off hot with this show. And um, now, okay, I'm going to ask you this then. How did you, what was your first learnings of sucking a dick? Meaning, where did you see how to do it? All that shit. Um, watching, I well, I'm not gonna lie. I was watching porn for a very long time. Um, I was introduced to porn. <laughs> I had an older brother who had a huge porn collection, so I used to steal all his DVDs and I used to watch. Porn. <laughs> it's always the older siblings that got the porn. <laughs> My sister was the same way. Yeah, <laughs> and so for me, I started taking all his DVDs and then I started watching porn from that way. But honestly, out of watching all the porn that I watched, it didn't teach me how to suck dick. I was just more so getting aroused by seeing like mm -hmm. women being fucked. It wasn't, I, I got my first dick sucking experience, like learning in person type stuff. Cause mm -hmm. at first I was like just swirling around the head. Like I didn't know mm -hmm. that I was supposed to go further. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and then the person I was with, he was like pushing my head for, he was like, oh no, you have to suck the whole thing. I was like, oh, sucking the whole thing. And I, I had to, I, I compared it like like a lollipop, mm -hmm. I guess. And you know, shout out to Lil Wayne, lollipop song. He said, look, be like lollipop. That kind of helped, you know. And <laughs> I got to a point to where I started. It also became a challenge to me, especially if somebody mm -hmm. had a big dick, like, mm -hmm. like pushing the entire dick in my mouth. Like I, like I, I wanted to make sure I got it all inside. So that was. So awesome. you were looking at deep throat early in life. <laughs> 
I was like, yes, yes, definitely. Some deep throat action for sure, for sure. Yeah. I just wanted to, and, and for me at that time, I was in a very, I guess, mentally submissive state. Like I enjoyed pleasing someone that I was with. So I wanted to make sure that that mm -hmm. person did it. And for me, I, and the more I was sucking dick and allowing it to go all the way inside, mm -hmm. I was mm -hmm. able to see like how uh, a man reacted to it. And for me, I was like, Super happy about that because I, <laughs> I feel like I was making niggas weak. And at that, at that one small moment of weakness, I was like, ah, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> I try to think the first dick suck I ever got in my life. Yeah. Um, it was funny because I had a choice of dating two girls when I was in Overbound. Because, mm. and then my roommate told me that one of the girls, well, you know, she sucked dick. And I always heard about sucking dick. I seen it in the porn, and I was the last to lose my virginity out of, out of my boys. Away. Mm, okay. And um, I didn't even get my dick sucked when I lost my virginity, which is the funny part. Actually, I ate her pussy, and I got hard because mm. I love to eat pussy. Mm -hmm. You know, that that that's just me. Mm. And she gave me head. I was like, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's like we're and, here now. We have arrived. Yeah, and, and I can tell that she wasn't a rookie edit that she'd have done it before. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, period. Because it's kind of like it's an art to it. Yeah. Like, yeah, so many girls say they throw goats, they say this. But it's if you're a good enough woman, you your dick sucker, you ain't got to be the sloppy dick sucker to be a great dick sucker. Right. And see that for me, that's what also came with skill. So when I first started, I used to always think it was like about shoving the dick in my mouth and trying to get yeah. the old dick in my mouth. But then it became different because not everyone's size is always going to be the same. But it's really about I, I learned it's about the suction, you know, about mm -hmm. having other, not even too much spit and too much liquids can be a problem too. Because at that yeah. point, there's no suction, you know? So it, it, it really becomes an artful balance of a girl, like, really, you know, giving head in, in the right way. And sometimes, mm -hmm. like, some guys say, oh, no hands, no hands. But sometimes hands add, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I feel like, you know, when they say a cherry on top or whipped cream mm -hmm. on top of some icing, like, hands, I feel like, also add a balance. Mm -hmm. Now, I do see that there's some videos where girls are sucking dick and they're using more hands than anything. Yeah. And see, that kind of throws off the balance because you still need the mouth for the wetness. So to me, I feel like it's it's really something that it it, it takes some, not time to figure out, but it just takes a balance to make sure. And mm -hmm. it's the balance based on the person. How is the person positioned? Is the, is the mm -hmm. guy standing up? Is he sitting down in the bed? Is he laying down flat? All of these different positions, I feel, require different di dick sucking skills. Like, if mm -hmm. a guy is standing up, I do feel like it's easier to deep throat and stuff like that. Now, mm -hmm. maybe if a guy is like laying down or even sitting down, you mm -hmm. might have to use like more of a hand and mouth combination to be able to mm -hmm. get all of the dick. I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah, that's. Oh, oh no, I, I, I totally understand. I, I have a vivid imagination. So, <laughs> yes. but, but also 69. Because yeah. it, she, she's right there at the curvature of the dick in the first place, especially she's on top, mm -hmm. you know, period, and everything. So, how does a female train her throat for face fucking? Because a lot of these girls don't know, know how to be face fucking. Ooh, uh, I that's a great question. I say I would say this, and and that's one of the main things was for me relaxing. But also, like, everybody has their limits. So even for me, I could get Facebook, and then I could get to a point to where... And for me, my main thing is, like, I since I've thrown up at a younger age, I don't want to throw up anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so for me, even though some guys may like it, I just don't like the, the, the my food coming up. I like food. I want food to stay where it's at. No, I, I don't. I, no, no, I want the porn vomit, not the real vomit. Let, yeah, let's make exactly. that, the clear shit, not no chunky, because no, nah, I yeah. the smell and, and yeah. my dick went real. It, it went away. And I, honestly, for me, when I threw up, it, it made my throat feel weird, and it made me not want to finish sucking dick, because I'm like, now I'm worried about other shit. But anyway. You got that taste in your mouth. And, yeah, exactly. But the guy, he wanted me to keep going. I'm like, you sure? Like, cause this is, some dudes are just some sick fucks. Let's just keep it one. You know? <laughs> 
But honestly, for a female to be able to Facebook, I really think it's really about relaxing. It's it's not yeah. to me. That's also similar to a girl stuffing a whole dick in her mouth. It's really about relaxing your throat and allowing it to go inside. Now, the biggest thing would be gag reflexes. But I feel like if a female's thinking about it too much, or maybe if she just ate right before she decided to suck dick, like these mm -hmm. things play a factor into maybe how long she could go or how hard she can get her Facebook. And also, I do feel like on the man's part, there has to be a rhythm that the guy has if he's going to Facebook her. You mm -hmm. can't face fuck her fast and then like it, there has she has to be expecting her you know her throat to open mm. up like for each pump maybe it's mm. one pump a second or every two seconds whatever it is mm. i think of a guy's face fucking mm. consistency has to be there in the he, he, he didn't even realize you face you you face fucking not fucking doggy style is a difference <laughs> different type of stroke you, you can't do the same yes. stroke it's, yes yes there's yeah, a certain yeah, yeah. type of stroke that has that yeah. and also you're not fucking a pussy. You're fucking her face. So that's yeah, also basically. you got to be a little bit more. I would say more tender. You have you can't yeah. be as aggressive as if you were fucking a pussy because then that's when you'll either get the throw up or the the you know the knee jerk reaction. She her throat yeah. won't open up because I mm. I don't feel like our throats were designed for us to, for females to just take dick in like. So I do feel like when someone's deep throating or even mm -hmm. face fucking, it's it's putting your it's putting a female's throat at a um at not an uncomfortable place, but at an unusual, you know, stance. Like it's not yeah. something that the throat is used to having. So I feel like it's taking a while for the throat to so even if a guy's mm -hmm. starting a Facebook, I feel like he can start off slow, starting off like like not immediately shoving his whole dick in her mouth. But yeah. get it to the tip of it, then, then like as you're pushing, mm -hmm. go further. As you're, you know, it's like fucking a tight pussy. I would probably say the same thing about that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'm gonna ask you this: Do you think that with social media, music, all this, do you think that ladies, women, as well as men, but most of women, get a false interpretation of how to suck a dick? Ooh. Um. <laughs> Ask great questions, don't our people? That's great. And that's it's great. off the top of the dome. I didn't even think about it, but go ahead. No. And that's, it's, uh, I would say, unfortunately, I would have to say yes, because I feel like for me, I learned sucking dick in person. I didn't learn sucking dick from watching the video. Because I feel like when it comes to sucking dick, you can watch a video, but that doesn't mean you're going to get the same size dick. That doesn't mean you're going to get the same person. That doesn't mean you're going to get that person's type of stroke. So it's, when it comes to sucking dick, I believe it's like an in-person learning session in a sense. And if you have a basic knowledge of how to suck a dick, then it can already work for you. But to watch a video and to like, obviously you don't you put a penis in your mouth. That's the most that I would think that a girl can get from watching a porn video. But the matter of how much spit you're using, how to allow your throat muscles to relax so, so a guy can Facebook you or yeah. you know fuck your throat, that's something that really happens internally with the body. And I don't know if somebody can get that thoroughly from a video because it's like it's hard to see somebody throw well, or, but not but not even just a video like because you have girls talk in the songs as well so it's kind of yeah. like it's like for example when like for example let's say they what you watch a twitter you see how many the videos where dude is found the fuck out of face he may think or she may think that's the type of blow job that all men would want right or, you get what i'm saying because when you've seen it repetitious, remember, the foolishness of the few, what people, drowns out the truth of the many. Mm -hmm. So it's about the bullhorn. So that's mm -hmm. why I asked that question, because when I think about when I came up in porn, when, even before I got in porn, the porn that I watch kind of, damn, I lost the word what I was about to say. See, that means it's good. <laughs> Yes, influence the porn that I made, and also the way I had sex with women, because I saw how soft, how sensual the men was, how the women mm -hmm. reacted to that. You know, period. Me, I don't want to fuck a woman's face. I want to sit back and let her handle her business with giving me head. I want to look at this shit. I want to see her work the shaft and work the tongue and, and make it wet and, you know, yes. make the balls a little bit. Get the touch. Get the touch yeah. a little bit. You know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so, you get what I'm saying? 
that's where we came up with. I came up with the giant jackies, you know, mm. the, 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 the pinkies, you know, towards the, the, that beginning. Pinky was one they of the people I watched yeah. early, yes. Yeah, they, they coming up with these girls now. These motherfuckers be having arms behind their head. And he just, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And to me, I feel like that takes the, that takes the, well, that would take the fun out of it for me because to me, I always love seeing men being so strong and dominant in their own ways. And, but when they're getting their dicks up, they, you know, they kind of, <laughs> they curl up, they become soft just a little bit because they're, they're in the moment of enjoyment. And for me as a woman to uh, actually cultivate that, that yeah. that's exciting for me. So not that I'm against Facebooking because I do believe that Facebooking is an art as well. But if a woman is in a space where she's sucking dick and it, there's no control on her part, that you know, that that kind of sucks. I mean, don't get it, don't get it twisted. I'm, I'm a I'm a dom, so you know, I like both sides of the face. But me personally, I rather pump the face. I, I don't want to fuck the face. You know, what I'm saying a little slow strokes. You know, say yes. pull it out. Tell yeah. to hold the mouth over it, put it in, put it. You know, that's just me. That's just me. I like playing with it. You know. Yeah. Really. And there's nothing wrong with that either. But that, like I said, even with that, there's a balance because there's a point where a man could Facebook a girl and then she could, you know, use her hand a little bit. Then he can go back to Facebooking her. But the, the, and for me, like one of the things that I I despise of that I used to allow that I, like when I was extremely young that I don't do anymore. Like I don't like a guy touching my head like while I'm giving like head. like you're, you're ruining for me. You're ruining the experience. Yes. No hands. I'm here. Let, let me do this. I got this. I got. I love when women do that too. She be like, "No, move your hands." I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> that to me, that's the equivalent of let, let's say a nigga is on top of me, yeah, and he's fucking me, and I'm holding his back, like, yeah, push it like that. <laughs> that defeats the purpose of the person doing, doing what they do. Even if you go on Facebook, yeah. that means that your stroke game has to be serious to where you don't need no head. You should be able to Facebook her with your dick going straight in her mouth just by you Facebooking. You know, like I, I do oh, feel like <laughs> allowing a woman, you know, to really work her muscles. So I guess if you're <clears throat> of stuff on Twitter, it may be a little bit depending on the woman, right? It may be harder for her to pick up how <clears throat> to, you know, mm-hmm. suck the dick, you know, and based on the experience that she's watching. See, ain't, ain't know why I say this because. See, let's see. We have let's talk about these these young athletes coming after these older women. That's part of the reason why they come after the older women. Yeah, the experience, the knowledge. Yeah, because because to me it's just like that. Now, 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 ladies, we ain't gonna forget about you. Let's talk about pussy. Tell me about the first experience you had when you got your pussy ache. I was way too young to be getting my pussy ache, but. Before I ever lost my virginity, that's all I was doing. Like, I wasn't fucking anybody. I wouldn't allow nobody to fuck me. All I would allow was for niggas to eat my pussy. <laughs> oh, no. How did that conversation go? Hold on. Yeah, hold on. I probably one of the dumb ones, actually. I ain't going to lie. Because I actually did that a couple of times where, you know, I didn't get no pussy, but I ate the pussy. I was like, let me eat it. <laughs> Either a guy would say, let me eat it, or I'll let him know, like, no, I'm not having sex yet. And, you know, it honestly was only like two different dudes who was mm-hmm. eating me out before I even became 18. But, you know, like for me, it was just a matter of like, I wasn't, I, I did, for me, it was a way for me to explore myself sexually, but I still felt like my vagina was intact. So I just, yeah. wasn't, I wasn't fucking, but see, this is why when I, I was, I was 18 when I did my first porn mm-hmm. video. And when I got into the porn industry, I started to learn about the different, you know, positions and all of these things about sex because mm-hmm. I didn't have as much experience prior to going in, you know. So I kind of and, see, and, see, and that's what's experience. crazy, you know, because now you're about to see us move to some industry talk. Let's go. That was what they were looking for back then. That's the reason why they wanted the 18 year old and 19 year old because they wanted them fresh off the boat, mm-hmm. you know. Period. And it's kind of like. I'm going to ask you this. Why do you think they it was like that? Well, because it's easy to mold somebody. It's easy for them to, you know, especially when it comes to a person like the, the guy I was with, he, he I, I was at, I learned how to suck his dick. I learned how the things that he liked and he enjoyed. But then with me and him, we're no longer, you know, around each other. 
I started to not only use those things in different spaces, but also learn the ways of other men. Because different guys like different things, you know? And so for me, I was exploring sex, understanding what men wanted, but also understanding how I enjoyed sex as well. So mm -hmm. I feel like at those ages, yes, it could be easy to mold someone, but it it's hard as far as like getting um, a wide range of experiences. Because even when I look mm -hmm. back at some of my younger videos, like they're, they're good because I'm cute, you know, obviously. So it's <laughs> good. But... I do feel like the videos, as as I started to do more videos and as I started to get older, I started to feel like they became better because they got even nastier, even sexier. I, a woman, as she grows, she's able to position herself in certain ways. She's able to dress herself in certain ways. She understands yeah. her body. She understands her look. So there's different features that she's able to show off in a different way. Like, I seen videos of me being 19. I'm like, why did I have my hair like that? Like my hair was like, I didn't even care about my hair at certain points. I was like, but yeah. see, sometimes as you as you grow, you're like, okay, you understand yeah. what you look like. You understand what you mm -hmm. do like about yourself or the things that you want to show off. So you become more tailored. And, and not only is it good for you because mm -hmm. you're enjoying it and you feel confident in doing it, but other people can see that through the camera. So see, see too on the, on the flip side for, for a male, I came in my 30s. Yeah, my 30s. Mm -hmm. And glad that I did versus my 20s. Mm. Because now, low key, I did want to try it when I was in my 20s. I, I, I ran to a dude and they just say, I think he he, he he got one over on me because he had me take some naked pictures. I was mm. thinking I was going to get an opportunity to do porn, but I digress. I ain't saying that. <laughs> <up again. laughs> He threw me off when he was talking about some. Yeah, we can sit together and jerk. And what I'm like, nah, nah, I ain't doing all that, bro. I'm, I'm trying to. Not <laughs> I'm not about to sit here while you jerk and I jerk off. No, we ain't that kind of buddies. <laughs> so, but, and I never really want to be in front of the camera. But anyway, it, if I did it in my twenties, I probably would have fucked it up because mm -hmm. one, I wasn't emotionally ready for that i would have fell in love with every piece of pussy that i probably would have fucked you know period because once again i was already a freak but it's a difference between i'm a freak regular life freak porn people don't and, understand that and see for me i i was young and i was in the space of where not only was I, quote unquote, having fun, exploring myself on camera, but to me, I was also making love to the person who I was with. So at least that's how I felt. I don't, mm -hmm. you know, I can't say for other people, but yeah. for me, I was in the space of where I I, I, I was in this uh, relationship with this person mm -hmm. and I just felt like we were uh, sharing our experiences on camera. So for me, it was a balance of more than just one thing. And I feel like it, it'd be great for the world to see this. But because I really love this person, this mm -hmm. is what I'm doing. And I'm enjoying this. And I'm I'm showing this on camera. Mm -hmm. So I also had to, as I started to get older, understand the business of porn. Mm -hmm. that for, Anybody can fuck on camera. Anybody yeah. can yeah. get on camera, make a video, they can fuck. Yeah. The question is, can you market it? Can you sell it? Can you, can yeah. you edit it? Can you find... The, the the niche of, of people that you're marketing to. So for me, as I started to, I, I had to start paying attention to the business. And more so what I started to do, and I did this very early on, and now it's becoming very popular for a lot of people, but I started to compare myself to a lot of people who weren't doing porn because the only real experiences that I had with sex was on camera, but everything in my, my life was obviously square outside of that. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to incorporate the porn world versus everything in my real life. And I seen influencers and how they operate and how they move. I was like, well, yeah. I want people to come to my page, see me, and they just happen to find out that I do porn, you know? Yeah. And I, I strictly, when I was also advertising, but I, I it mm. took me a long time to even advertise on Twitter because mainly mm. I was using Rude, I was using X videos. Like I chose to keep porn on porn sites. I didn't mm. want my main thing, and I'm very big on this. I I, I do not want um, the little ones uh, watching anything, you know. Yeah. So I oh, yeah, yeah 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 yeah. I made sure to steer my content away from that. So I didn't want my content mm. on those platforms for them to find mm. it. But as porn started to grow on places like Twitter and it became that space where that's yeah. when I started to promote it um, on Twitter and things like that. Mm -hmm. so. 
see, yeah. see, see, with me, it was um, twofold what, what I was doing. It was one, not, I wasn't about being a male talent. That's the one thing that I did not do during my career. Now, towards the end of my career, so people can understand this, I was more about the company not being the talent. Even mm-hmm. though I was the quote unquote resident male talent. The only reason why they knew me because I was in enough scenes. Let's just put it that way. I worked okay. on five other male talents and, and other things. But it was seeing females, helping females build their shit. Because guys were telling me from Hollywood back then, get them girls doing their own site. This mm-hmm. is 2012. They saying, don't My- send them out here. <laughs> Don't send them out here, guy. They ain't gonna get them. I, one I was early on, my my site was built in 2011, and um, well, actually, yeah, it was built in 2010, and then my company I opened in 2011. But I learned how to build websites very early on when <clears throat> there there wasn't even many girls even holding a camera at that point. Yeah. It was a lot of people who were still getting hired to do scenes. And once I once I had my site built, and then I started running the site on my own. I, I didn't care about working for a company. I had different companies contact me and maybe depending on like me looking back, maybe I probably would have worked with different people just to be able to connect and network, but everything happens how it's supposed to. So for me, my main thing was I didn't want anything out there to be seen of me and I wasn't making money directly from it. So now, anything that I was in, I wanted complete control of. Okay, now I'm gonna ask you this because I had this happen. It's first time I'm actually mentioning this, and this is gonna go on YouTube. A certain YouTuber had a nerve to say something about type female that I fucked in my um, in my scene because of I made a comment on a video of his. It wasn't negative, but he, you know he has a little ego. You know, I give it to him. I want to say who he is. I don't want to give him that platform, but he know who he is, buddy. But how <laughs> has this round treated you knowing that you're a porn star. Oh, you mean like the, the non-porn people? Bingo. Oh, well, that I, I don't know if I mentioned, I think I mentioned this to you uh, on one of the episodes that we did. Yeah. Um, I When I started to get into podcasting, I started my podcast. Uh, well, I started podcasting before 2016. It was actually one of the male talents. He studied communications in school, and we had the Strokes and Smile show in this place called Yacht Radio on Long Island. So I first got into podcasting. And then I wasn't able to get to Long Island anymore because I didn't have a car at that time. So I ended up going to this place called DTF Radio, which is in Brooklyn. So going there, traveling there on the train, this was basically, and uh, a lot of people did music at this yeah. station. It was a big music station. They did say that they had somebody who had a sex-based radio show prior to me coming, but that person wasn't there when I showed up. They said they were there years ago, so I guess yeah. I was the person to bring, I guess, sex yeah. back to the station. And um, for me, I just became, I was the only porn star. There was, mm-hmm. uh, unless I brought a porn star and there was no porn mm-hmm. stars there. <laughs> so I was just, <laughs> I was in a space full of uh, regular women and regular guys. And, you know, guys are always excited because guys sometimes, you know, they see sex in a different way. And sometimes mm-hmm. women are excited too. I'm not going to disregard mm-hmm. the women. But they, I did run across a lot of women who, you know, they had their clur- their pearls clutch. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, you suck dick. And, and my main approach to all of this is, is, Everybody's fucking. Y'all are all sucking dick, whether it's on camera or off camera. That doesn't make you any better than the next person. And what I also start to realize is because, uh, and what, this is another thing people don't realize about porn stars or people in the sex industry. Mm-hmm. The amount of control that people have in the sex industry is unmatched. You know, when it comes to people who are not in the sex industry, a lot of these people, they have a lack of control. They're, they're fucking everything and anything wherever, whenever, without a care in the world. And I realized that people had so much to say about me and my videos, but y'all are fucking for nothing in the back of people's cars. Like, so for me, I was just like, I, I, I have more of a coup to be able to say no or to say when and how, and the people who are not as born can't. So it's like, who's really the intelligent person? Cause I, yeah. I am being shunned because I decided to make money off my sex. And shout out to my aunt, yo. One of my yeah. family, you know, she was hey. she's so dope. She was just like, they're only mad because they can't do it. I was like, damn. Yeah. 
Because, because, because it's like, um, like on YouTube they had these shorts, and it just, I don't know how the hell this podcast came up. It's, it's white girl or what have you, and it's, it's one of those podcasts where they love bringing the only fan girls up there. Oh, uh. and they bring some other people, and we go to this only fan shame train. So yeah, I talked about that on one of my episodes. They had brought um. Adam 22 on there and yeah. they were pretty much trying to shun him about being married to a porn star you know and he explained it how you know they obviously have control they have an agreement they have an arrangement they have things that they talk about in their marriage and mm-hmm. to me I just never understand what what goes on in the minds of other people when it comes to other people's genitals like what like what does their marriage have to do with anybody else so what he married a porn star that's their relationship why are you so upset about no, that? No, 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 hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Here's the argument. You missed the whole argument. Because he allowed her to have sex with other men, but people, he, he was having sex with other women. He, he He's in the videos. He, he does yes. threesome. Yes. And y'all ain't said nothing about that. Oh, isn't that wrong with that? But because she decided to fuck Jason Love, oh my God, I can't believe she fucked that big black dude. That th- Did y'all not and say she that she was her husband happily? <laughs> Sorry. No, no. Did that? They, did they not pay attention? She went to the AVNs. Did you not understand that some of these companies was like, we would book you if you shoot with somebody over the Adam. <laughs> See, I mean, see, it, it, and, and I'm pretty sure they already were doing it. Like people don't get it. Because I look at it like this, right? Now, if you want to go on a relationship, because the clip that I saw, the lady was going on a relationship. She was like, I had a toxic home, and and I became an accountant, and this, this, this. I chose a different path, but boom, boom. This is my thing. You chose that path, just like this lady chose this. You know, period. It doesn't make you better, because... You chose to choose that path because I'm pretty sure you have just as high a bad account as her, if not more. You just don't want to say that. <laughs> it, it, to me, it's the body counts behind the camera for me. It's the body. It's the, that, And that's why I mentioned that when it came to me being at DTF radio, you know, there I had some great experiences where people who were in regular lives and, you know, yeah. not having sex on camera where they were able to come and share their sexual experiences vocally. Some people came very open and they're like, hey, I don't mind talking and saying some things. And then there was other people who was like, oh no, like how dare y'all do that? And I I used to have to call these people out because I'm like, I know you just you just spoke three niggas the other day. Nobody knows, but you told me that. So it's like, you know, how, how dare you look down on anybody, you know? And so for me, it just became a um, I guess an internal joke to myself because yeah. it's like I know my status. I know my body. I, I've been tested. I've been grateful to, you know, not really encounter anything. So for me, I'm in a very healthy state of my life. So I can care what anybody uh, has to say. You know what I'm saying? Like, my, my main thing is this. Y'all worrying about people's body counts. Can y'all go to the clinic and not cry? That <laughs> can y'all go to the clinic that and part. not, you know, and, and be okay with whatever the doctor has to tell you? That's the thing that people aren't really talking about because porn stars, they are very responsible people, despite what you, <coughs> you know, people think and see, people. and now, and see, here's the thing though. We about to we about to kick this up a notch, people, because see, I ain't got to be in the matter yet, but we'll get, get to after I say this. Um when it comes down to it, is that we one have to be responsible because the era that you came in, I came in, you came up positive on a test, and no it ain't even got to be HIV, ain't right. got to be hurt. It could have been God of fucking real. Your career is done. They mm-hmm. are very lenient in this day and age. Yeah. Very lenient. I've heard a lot of different uh, stories and situations from people, and I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 mean I ain't knocking them, but they're very he- lenient. Yeah, yeah. And for me, it, it has made me and also I've been like this anyways. I never really shot with a lot of different people. I always choose to 
either I'm shooting with one person at a time or a selection of people at a time. So I've always been controlled in that sense anyways. Mm -hmm. But my main priority was making sure that if I decided to enter the porn industry, that I'm leaving exactly how I'm coming. Mm -hmm. That's it. You know, and honestly, I feel like now the, the lack of how people even think about porn stars in that sense, it opens the door for people to have those types of errors. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So when it comes to people who are squares and who are not in the porn industry, they don't understand that people are going to get tested before these shoots. They don't understand that, you know, there's some girls, like I was talking to one of the girls at one of the uh, events I went to years ago, and she was saying, she's like, I had a boyfriend and I had to stop fucking with him because I didn't want to him, him to jeopardize Cause I felt like he was cheating and I couldn't say, I couldn't say whether he was or not. And I didn't want him to jeopardize my opportunity. So I just stopped fucking with him just so I can do porn. Like the sacrifices that sometimes people make to actually be able to make sure that they're doing their due diligence before they walk in a room and be with somebody else. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. it's a lot. See, to yeah. Me. Yeah. Because it's even if they're swingers, I've talked to the swingers. They, they people, can you imagine a swinger? Have to show restraint at a swing apart. <laughs> that, part. that part. Yeah. And, it, and yeah. it's one of the it's one of the good ones too. I'm talking about everything hot in that motherfucker. <laughs> everything looks good. It's the it's them dark back rooms. It's it's them after the mm. club nights. Like, you know, I, I have close friends and family members who do some wild stuff that I'm not even doing. And, and, you know, to me, I always, uh, I pride myself on just being myself. You know, I'm going to authentically be myself, whether I'm dealing with someone on camera, not really dealing with anybody off camera, because that's a choice for me. Um, I'm not in a relationship. So I've made a decision to say, hey, if I'm going to be fucking, it, it's on camera. So that's, <laughs> that's the point that I'm at in my life, you know. And so I've just gotten to the space to where it's really about being responsible, whether you are fucking on camera, off camera. It's very important to be responsible. And I feel like porn stars don't get enough credit for how responsible they really are. Yeah, now, you know, it's like hit or misses where people who do do foolish things in the industry, because it mm -hmm. does happen. But yeah. I've seen a lot more foolish stuff on the Internet. Like I've seen, yeah. you know, viral stories of uh, guys giving women, you know, serious diseases. And they're like, sorry. Wild stuff like I've seen on the Internet. So. For me, I, I I I really applaud how thorough they are when it comes to a lot of porn stars. They're very mm -hmm. thorough and they're very responsible. And I don't think that they get enough credit for how responsible they are most of the time. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So, now, we about to get you the meat of the matter, right? Okay. See, I never told what the meat of the matter was because I like getting the reaction. And we're going to talk black sexuality. Mm. Yeah, it's yeah, about to get about to get real up in so buckle up, people. Like <laughs> you blunt. Go ahead, take that sip of that 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 dose. You know what I'm saying? I've been in the house with it, no it, wine. It, 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 it's about to get real. So now, I I'm just gonna say this statement, and I'm gonna let you go from there. We are cool with black sex. But not cool with black sexuality. Go. Yeah, it's very true. Um, I am a black female who don't have any scenes with white guys. Mm -hmm. The closest that I've gotten to a white guy is a Puerto Rican. And I guess <laughs> they can call him white if they want to, you know. Shout out to mm -hmm. Puerto Rican. That's the closest thing I've gotten to a, a white guy. And um, for me, and he was an exception, you know, because yeah. he just has such a great energy and such a great experience. Yeah. Puerto Rock, Puerto Rock is a legend. Yeah, just, yeah. yeah. He, he was an exception because he's he's super dope. But um, I, I don't have any scenes with any white guys, and um, uh, I've gotten a lot of emails about that. A lot of guys say like, "Hey, you don't do scenes with," and you know, I've even when had to, when companies were contacting me, and for me, it's never me saying like, "Oh, I'm just not doing scenes with white guys." That's it's for me. I just enjoy black men. I enjoy pleasing black men. I enjoy having sex with black men. That's just me. And what I started to learn in this industry, there are so many females of different nationalities who only have scenes with black men. So I said to myself, why can't I be one of those people? Why, why do I have to do something that I don't want to do? 
when I came into this industry, I wanted to have sex and it was black men. I wanted to see black men. <laughs> I wanted to see black men being dominant. So for me, that's what I chose to do. That's my lane. And if I miss the interracial market with me, then that, that's what I miss, you know? <laughs> I want my people to always be authentic. And that's kind of what I want to continue to do. I don't do anal, so nobody's going to mm. see me do anal scenes. Like, it, it, to me, it, it's really not even that. It's really about somebody being authentically who they are. Mm. And when it comes to Black sexuality, I do feel like it has expanded in a lot of ways because mm. you know there was this whole uh, stereotype of, like, Black girls can't suck dick, and then you start seeing Black girls sucking dick, you know, super hard mm. and going in, you know? And so that, that has now changed, you know? Mm. So... I, I do feel like black people are starting to explore more when it comes to sex. Mm -hmm. And um, I do think it is growing, you know, I mm -hmm. do. Um, I enjoy even the black women who are doing more cosplay, doing more dress up, doing more, you know, uh, yeah. uh, I guess cinematic scenes. And that's kind of what, mm -hmm. like for me, I'm not doing a lot of scenes now, but even when I do step out of the quote unquote hiatus that people feel like I'm on, but it's not really a hiatus. It's like I shoot mm. whenever I feel like it. If I feel like it, that's really what it is. And mm. I, my goal is to make more cinematic scenes. I love movies. I love films. That's what I personally like. So I want to mm. do things that reflect things that I'm truly interested in. Mm. So seeing people tap into that market, it, it, it's a good thing. I like. Yeah, because I talked to... Uh... A young lady, um, Liaris, and she said that she said it's plenty of them in the cosplay, but they don't get the recognition, mm. you know. Period. And see, too, also, why did black porn go away so fast? Because it used to be a time, even with the DVD set, DVD section, there used to be a whole section of DVDs releases, black, black. black companies that specifically did you know what i'm saying the ones that do it now they're known but they're not highlighted as heavy as the ones you get what i'm saying why is that and it, and, and how can it be changed oh well i feel like and this is where it comes to a lot of people not focusing on the technical part of things but it's it's yeah. really about the algorithms the algorithms that are created and the way a lot of these sites and you know hashtags and apps that are set up mm -hmm. a lot of these things aren't being created by people who are black so because mm -hmm. of that those people and I, I hey i'm not against people highlighting who you are if you are a mm -hmm. white male and you created an app of course you want to want to see white men fucking other you know whatever mm -hmm. you're fucking you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's really a by a, a byproduct of people not being in control of the applications, learning how to build apps, learning how to control algorithms when it comes to applications, learning how to fix di uh, different widgets to make sure different things pop up on different pages at different times. So it's really a lack of control in that sector. And so for me, that's that's also been a part of my new wave is, uh, you know, really becoming a mm -hmm. part of the technical part of the porn industry understanding mm -hmm. coding understanding the the building of applications understanding yeah. you know, vr and you know understanding like how these things work how these things get marketed and how these things get put out there because a lot of black content creators we create content but then again we we end up fighting with the the platforms that we're putting the content mm -hmm. on it's time for us to start controlling the platforms and creating the platforms that we're going to use you know yeah, no, ownership is key, you know, but because to me, even with, like, I even say it all the time, any female should have a dot com. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sorry, hey, not a dot, no disrespect to any of the ladies that do this, but a not a dot com that leads them to a link tree. No, an actual dot com where they can, the more direct it comes to you, that way you want to get it, you know, yep. period. And plus, for ladies that do, you know, the extra stuff. You know, you got your dot com, but this is something else I want to harp on. It's like this. Now, I've noticed when it comes to the black BDSM, one, we see more images of it, and I'm loving it, but even more so, you're starting to see women, black women, is submissive. But mm -hmm. why is it so hard for dudes to grasp that? Because I even had a girl say, I had to actually do the choke me. He looked at me like I was crazy. 
<laughs> said, damn. <laughs> he probably wasn't used to choking bitches. But anywho, uh, <laughs> that's that's kind of how I started. Like I, I used mm-hmm. to, and I still refer to myself as this. I the submissive mm-hmm. slut. Like I, I was very submissive, mm-hmm. especially to the partner who I was with at the time. I used to do where he used to put chains on my neck and walk mm-hmm. around with me with the chain and stuff like that. You know, I, I, when I was, and not that I am not submissive now, I do have uh, still like when I'm in that space with someone that I trust in that space, mm-hmm. I become completely submissive. So for me, when I'm in that space, I'm committed. I'm mm-hmm. committed to pleasing. Hence, you know, learning how to suck dick because I wanted to please the person I was with. I understood that they enjoyed uh, getting their dick sucked. And I was like, okay, I want to make him feel that way too, you know? <laughs> yeah. and, and, uh, it's unfortunate, but because black men, black women sometimes have a voice on them, or they may speak up in certain sectors and stuff like that, they may not be deemed as being submissive. But I always, believe, no matter what race you are, truly, it just takes the right dominant person to make someone submissive. Mm-hmm. If you are not yeah. a truly authentic dominant person, it can become difficult to to you know to have a submissive. You know, well, one it has to be a balance, especially if you're in a relationship. Is it's going to be one moment where the wife is the dominant, the, the husband is submissive, then the vice versa. You know, it always had to be a balance to balance things out. That's how I look at things. Absolutely. You know, and I had to learn that as I grew older, too, because even when I was extremely younger, I enjoyed being in submissive position so much to where I wasn't taking control in the areas of my life that I needed to control. And as mm-hmm. I started to grow older, I'm like, OK, we enjoy being submissive. But once we leave this bedroom, we're going to have to be dominant when we're hosting something at a convention or when we're building our sites or when we're starting yeah. LLCs. Like, you're going to have to go out there and put your foot mm-hmm. to the paper and figure these things out. So when it came mm-hmm. to me handling the business side of my company and making things grow, yeah, mm-hmm. it, it, it does take some dominance because you have to go out there and literally put yourself out there and kind of, you know, start a path, mm-hmm. you know? Now, I'm going to say some shit. They're about to piss off some people. We, and, and I really want your opinion on this. What? Now, when you hear the videos of the girls that sit here and say OnlyFans destroy their lives and all this, right? Oh, if you notice, now that they're 25, and this is, this is my thought, in this day and age, now, I think when you came in in, in, in your 19, when you were 19, I you came in little, 2010. 2010 was when I created my Yeah, first. yeah. Okay. I'm not going to go in front. 2010, 18 was a little bit more grown than 2024, 2023, 18. And I feel that any female that gets into this business should be 30 and up. That's just me. Mm-hmm. Because, and like, and I, this is this is where I, 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 I agree with you as well. And because... Even though I started when I was 18 years old, I I, I was very fortunate to be around people that I can learn from, to be around Mm -hmm. people. And and also not even just that, because I wasn't the only person around. There were Mm -hmm. other females around who did get to where I'm at. So Mm -hmm. it really takes a person's initial mindset to want to learn, to want to grow and to want to really make sure that they see things through, you know. Mm -hmm. So I also feel like maybe had I been a lot a little bit older getting into porn i would have handled business in a completely different sense emotions wouldn't have mattered it wouldn't have mattered yeah. how long i with somebody it wouldn't have mattered if i love somebody or not when it came to certain mm-hmm. situations so for me i felt like i was more emotionally involved because i was younger and i made more emotional decisions versus mm-hmm. now there's emotion in it but the emotion for me now comes the passion i'm passionate yeah. about I'm passionate about creating and it's not about being passionate about a person, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. Because because to me, the reason why <clears throat> I say that, because as an older woman, you're mentally, have you mentally and emotionally ready for what comes with it. Mm-hmm. Because one of the things, one of the biggest blockers is that shame. Yeah. Why? Kids ain't grown. Mama and daddy is old or they gone, and you really don't give a fuck no goddamn more. You're like, you know something, you kiss my ass. <laughs> and, see, and I had to start to grapple with that too. There, I, I, 
there are friends that I've gained because of this. There are people yeah. who, have, uh, who, who have distanced themselves because of yeah. this. I'm okay with all of them, you know? Like, yeah. for me, and I also had to learn this as well as I got older. What's supposed to be will be, and what's not is not, you know? They're, they're, I had people who I went to high school with was like, oh, my God, I can't believe this person's doing that. And, you know, I went to college. I have a bachelor's degree. I, I, I did all of the things that, you know, I was supposed to do. And I've also had regular jobs to where I've worked and stuff like that. So for me, I've always had a balance of creating a business, having a life. That was very, very yeah. important to me. And so for me, there were people in my family who accepted it. There were people who didn't. But the people who mattered to me most, which is my father, my mom, my grandmother's like the initial people, those people didn't care. And that's that's who mattered to me at the end of the day because it's usually the people who really don't even matter who have the most to say, the people who yeah. have no in your life who have the yeah. most assignment. and truly at the end of the day your life is your life your life you only have one life to live so if you're living a life of unhappiness that's on you mm-hmm. born with something that i enjoyed so for me mm-hmm. whether people decided to distance themselves from me or become closer to me it wasn't going to make me no difference because it was my responsibility to live my own life you know mm-hmm yeah, because I mean, even though once it got out, nobody was surprised <laughs> for me. <laughs> oh, we knew you were gonna do it, Bar. If anybody <laughs> That's it, Dad. Y'all have y'all have no faith in me. Well, a, a lot of guys from my old hood, uh, uh where yeah. I grew up at, they a lot of them were just shocked. I think they were also mad because I didn't give them pussy, so they're like <laughs> Fuck me, like, yeah, no, because I'm not fucking niggas in the hood. That's not that was never my mo. Like, you know, mm-hmm. so I was always the girl who was around, but uh, mm-hmm. no one could ever, I guess, take me down. So when they see yeah. my video, they're like, <gasps> like, it's not even like that. They're just mad because they didn't get the pussy. That was just really. <laughs> and see, me, we 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 don't get that same thing. It's it's. Like when I was in my last class reunion, it just was like, uh, you know, wives pulling their husband away. I'm like, what? What do you think? I'm gonna take him to a porn shoot or something? <laughs> what you were like? My wife was worried because you know I'm gonna bump into you. I was like, what? <laughs> what? Like, I mean, I ain't gonna. I did just throw some VIP parties, but that that had nothing to do with it. Yeah, but and, and see, for me, females get. I, I used to think this though. To me, I used to think that females get more um, pushback from doing porn than guys. Because in my experience, I always seen guys get praised. Guys can always go oh. and have relationships. No, like the, oh. the guy always looks like the king. He looks like the winner. But the female, to me, it always the pushback becomes like, it, oh, she's being degraded it, because she decided to be on camera. Well, no, the guy and the girl both decided to be on camera. Why is one being degraded and one is not? You know what I'm saying? Oh no, like, I, I I ain't gonna front. It's like, from my experience, it's 50, 50, 50. Mm-hmm. Because conversations of like, if I was dating somebody, well, do you 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 ever call it disease or anything? I'm like, oh, that too. You know, it's it. They were like, I can't believe that your wife let you do it. I'm like, she did it too, and she's bisexual. And we were swinging. And like, and, no, I'm gonna tell you what's funny. Female, it, I, I really believe this. Females do not like it if they know the wife knows. <laughs> Which is wild to me because I feel like that is the. And this is one of the things I learned. Oh my God! When I started shooting with uh, the group uh, Team VP, when I started shooting with them, what what yeah. really made me so happy was that, like, even when I did my scene with Richard Man, Richard Man's wife was there. She was like, "I think you should shoot with her." And me and her were talking, and I like to me that's what I enjoyed even more. Like, yeah. I love people being upfront. I love people being in there, like completely comfortable like these are the things that are extremely uh to me essential yeah. i don't like no give, don't give me no backdoor shit if you gotta hide to come and do a scene then you shouldn't be doing it no uh no no that and and that was the crazy part because like i said it's, it's like to me if they knew even in regular life like if i talk to a female i let them know she was swinging my wife will know it like her pussy just went dry <laughs> 
I don't understand. Hey, <laughs> me, that make think with no complication <laughs> over here. Come on. Thank you. And see, for me, like, even though I'm not in a relationship right now, like, I am still, you know, mm-hmm. not even dating because I don't even trust somebody to date. That's a whole other, <laughs> whole other thing. I, 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 I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm fresh, new to the market, so. And and honestly, I, I, I there's things that I want in life outside of porn. So when it comes to yeah. a partner, these are things that are essential. So I'm really like. Uh, looking at a dude in many, many different ways. So, and, and, and also, we're older. Yes. So, because people don't realize as you get older, your taste change. Facts. You know, period. What you expect change. It, yeah. it ain't even about a, a nigga's big dick and how long he can fuck. Nah. Are you consistent in your life overall? Like, do, do you drink water? Like, there are different things. <laughs> do you at least go to the doctor to get a physical? Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, there are different things that I look for in a man. Like uh, a dude who's out every single night at the club, that's not my dude because I'm not out every single night. That that you know, we I I, I need somebody on the same lifestyle as me. Mm-hmm. And also because I do have a history in porn, people think that I'm retired, people think that I've quit. I've never made those statements, so that is not up to anybody. But am I shooting with any and everybody? No. Uh, and there may be times, there are times I think I'm like, oh, I'm not shooting anymore. I'm just going to produce. And then I'll come across opportunities that I feel comfortable with. And then I'll decide to do a scene, you know? Yeah, that's, um, that's the only way I would ever, 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 ever in a lifetime come out of retirement. It had to be the right situation for me to do. Yeah, the right situation. And, I don't, and right now, I don't know what that is. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. That's I it? don't know what that is. I, it's no. like... I, the, I shot the last scene that I shot before I had recently shot. I had shot a scene in 2017, and I didn't yeah. shoot another scene again until 2022. And it still wasn't a sex scene. It was still a blowjob scene. So I still haven't shot a sex scene since 2017. So it's still been a very long time for me to actually shoot a sex scene. But um, for me, I do want to, as I'm rebuilding my site, I am adding new content to the site. So that was another reason why I decided to you know, do the two scenes that I did. But even outside of that, I wanted to make sure, one, that I was giving my fans something that was new from me because that's something that they was asking for. But I wanted to be the right situation. I wanted it to be completely authentic. So that that was very, very important to me. And my future partner, whoever that may be, mm. not that I am going to be consistently shooting porn, but if I decide to shoot porn, that yeah. is something that that person has to be comfortable with. Now, people low-key, she just did a Kendrick, right? Or oh, she just did a Kendrick. Or not, nah, like she drops every like two years. Oh, I'm definitely Kendrick. I'm 100% Kendrick. Yeah. yeah. She she drop every two years at this motherfucker. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm dropping every day. Kendrick, but because I make gold. When I when I make, it's going to be amazing, and you're gonna love it, and you're gonna replay that shit over and over again. Yeah. And also, when but even before I stopped uh, shooting new scenes, I had made a lot of scenes that I never put out. I was shooting, and I I, I had created content and. For me, when I built my site, I always decided to add content in. And when it comes to these different platforms, like we spoke about, like when it comes to OnlyFans and X videos, all of these platforms, sometimes they reject videos for whether you don't have an ID or the back of yeah. ID or current ID or new model release. Oh, so I have I, no Fab House rejected one of mine because I ain't have a cum shot in it. <laughs> I said, really? Wow. <laughs> it, it was a cream pie. And sometimes you can have everything and they still be like, nope. So yeah. for me, and that's why you like you when you said have a dot com, having dot com is very important because that's where you can put your content. A place and, and that's what I, I I bait myself off of continuously having my website because there's things on my website that people aren't gonna get on these other sites. So, so well yeah. people. I hope we entertained y'all. Cause I held this gorgeous lady up here for an hour, and uh, she's a pod mommy. I told you. I love being a fellow podcasters. Excuse me. Excuse, excuse me. The term they call now is porn casters. I guess. Uh, I really, guess that that's a term now. now. That's a term now. Yeah. Porn casters. Yeah, you so. know when I when in twenty six I started my podcast in twenty sixteen, the Small Six and Network Show, and. Wasn't I didn't see a lot of people in porn doing podcasting. I'll be honest. There's a lot of podcasters out there, but it wasn't people who were porn stars. All right. 
I'm starting to wonder did 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 we start something? Guys, <laughs> well, started doing, a lot of people I, popped in when I started. I was I, like, it's so it's I, it's beautiful to see. I'll just say that it's yeah. very good to see because at least people who are having these real sexual experiences who aren't afraid to speak about it, and you know what it's doing? It's making people who are not porn stars talk about sex. Now everybody wants to yeah. talk about it. Yeah, and see, too, is also to kind of act that podcast that I was talking about and the freaking frats that they'll bring these OnlyFans girls on here just for shock value, not education. Right. right. You know, period. Because not everybody that got an OnlyFans is no different than when back in the day when OnlyFans and, excuse me, back in the day when Backpage and Craigslist blew the fuck up because of the Bush recession. <laughs> Because people were losing jobs and they said, well, why not? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They won't want me to stay in it. I got into porn through Cra Craigslist. So. So there you go. So with yeah. that being said, Miss Smile, tell everybody where they can spend money on you and <laughs> see your podcast, baby. Yes, absolutely. You guys can see uh, the Smile Sister Network show on Spotify, iHeartRadio. Apple Podcasts, all of those platforms. And you guys just Google uh, B Smiles, Vanessa Smiles. Um, you guys go to my OnlyFans for right now, but I am relaunching Ratchet BJs and I'm uh, relaunching my own site, Vanessa Smiles with an S, triple X.com. So my birthday is in August. So I am hoping for August release date. I know it's been taking some time, but I am building this by hands, people. <laughs> okay. Yeah. By hands. So it's it's being created by me. So I think that people will love it. They'll know the new content. As well as the unreleased content that people have never seen before, so it's really exciting. Oh, yes. And premium smokers, we will get her on there. I'm not guaranteed she's gonna show y'all anything. She'll wiggle it for you, but she might not show you anything. But she's gonna <laughs> take for you. But you know what I mean. We're talking about the premium smoke room only on loyal fans right now. Fifty five percent off to the end of the year for the first month. We're talking about now six premium podcast for you to enjoy with four sexy hostesses that you're going to fall in love with. It gets more candid. It gets more provocative. It gets more predictable. It gets more crazy. It gets more wilder. The tits come out. Dildos might come out. You don't know unless you subscribe. And if you like Triple X, you can go to the Triple X store and see me give ladies that work, if you know what I mean. And also, the other, for my Spotify users, I got something for you too. Savage Smoke, where I discuss the porn through a male's point of view as I talk to the industry's top male talents and male producers. We talk to give you that real smoke of how men deal in the industry. Plus, a little extra over 300 episodes combined from stuff with the Premium Smoke podcast that you won't get on Loyal Fans, limited series podcast episodes that I did as well as some other stuff. So, a lot for you to look on there. So, with that being said, people, you know how we end this thing all day and every day. Life is a learning experience. What's the point of the experience if you haven't learned anything? Smoke this over. Say goodbye to him, Miss Miles. Lady, y'all, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs>